So let's talk about the factors that can cause a shift in IS schedule now. So herein we are to incorporate government sector as well because as far as IS schedule is concerned when we were deriving it we omitted the government sector but in reality we know government is a major component major part of economy so we just need to incorporate government sector here which comprises of absolutely G. G stands for government expenditure plus taxes. One more thing here in case of I, we are writing R as well. It means investment demand is dependent upon R. Higher the rate of return, rate of interest, lower would be the investment demand. This is something that we know. And in case of government expenditure, this is quite autonomous to anything. Largely, this is a common belief that government spending does not depend upon level of a rate of interest in the economy or anything. It is largely neutral to a lot of considerations so if you are students of economics i'm sure we know this thing but if you are new to it then intuitively you can understand in this very manner government expenditure is not dependent upon these extraneous considerations in terms of how much is the cost involved and how much is the risk involved government undertakes expenditure largely for social considerations like present time covid pandemic is there so even if there is no rate of return good rate of return in the economy still government would be undertaking expenditure right so maybe it's not just about the mechanical aspects we can try understanding these things intuitively as well and here is the intuitive explanation all right second thing is this that taxes components are there De definitely absolutely taxes are very very vital component of our economy we all pay taxes be it direct indirect and herein when we're talking about saving then saving becomes a function of disposable income and not just of income so definitely saving is dependent upon income but disposable income that means income minus taxes so that becomes a disposable income that's it plus taxes so definitely taxes are to be added to the saving component so investments plus government expenditure they are injections into the economy and savings and taxes they're withdrawals from the economy and in the case of equilibrium we know condition of equilibrium is this wherein injections are equal to withdrawals or i plus g is equal to savings plus taxes this is this is it this is quite simple now let's get on to the factors that could cause a shift in is curve so this is really really simple this diagram is quite looking as if it's really difficult but this this is not in in fact we really don't need to make it in this very manner because the author has tried explaining one thing here that the moment we incorporate the government sector in case of i curve or investment curve the investment curve gets shifted towards the right because we are incorporating the government sector here and government sector or government expenditure is autonomous to interest rate it does not depend upon the rate of interest it depends upon a lot of other things it is autonomous to rate of interest so we are talking in academical sense so let's just try to restrict ourselves to one point here that government expenditure is independent of rate of interest okay this is our only point do not end up writing that it is independent to this and that no it's just rate of interest we're talking about right now that's it and what would happen nothing would happen it's really simple that moment investment demand we are adding the government component and it would get shifted towards the right that's it so for example rate of interest is r0 and investment is like this here but the moment government is also a part of the economy then government expenditure would be added on to this and it would shift towards the right side and will be here that's it. it gets shifted towards the right this is really simple and when we're talking about the taxes so what would happen now because in present circumstances when government too is a part of this entire thing then for equilibrium in the saving plus income thing we need to have i plus g here that is from here <coughs> till here at rate of interest r0 we need to have investment plus government spending up till here right here now how to do it in this very left side of the diagram no right side of diagram but let's just try incorporating the taxes here so what we have done is we have unnecessarily made this photo or diagram confusing we really are not supposed to make or draw this line we can directly end up drawing this very line and either way in the exam we will not be having time to categorically or explicitly explain this so what author has done is this simply in case of saving plus taxes curve we are having saving which is a function of disposable income plus taxes all right so if we are adding something to this very curve it means it's gonna go shift upwards that's it this is what has happened 
although it is really not needed to explain this tiny point but just for the sake of explanation the point is if we are deducting something let's say 100 as a taxes from disposable income and then we're adding the same very 100 rupees taxes onto this equation then why are they not cancelling out each other minus 100 plus 100 they should be cancelling out each other right and if they're cancelling out each other then why are we showing it as an upward movement the answer being they are actually not cancelling out each other we are deducting taxes as rupees 100 that is right but saving is not a function of sorry saving is a proportion of the disposable income so if taxes are getting decreased to the tune of rupees 100 then saving would go down as a proportion of that very decrement only so the tiny fraction comprises the saving part from the total disposable income but addition is to the full extent of rupees 100 so they are not cancelling out each other that that's why we are seeing when the moment we incorporate taxes into this entire thing despite this being 100 the deduction part and despite addition being rupees 100 still saving curve would shift upward that's the explanation either way it's written in the book i have explained it it was not needed it was not very important but because it was there in the book that's why i have done it so let's get on to the important parts now so it's really simple taxes got incorporated the a curve got shifted upwards and that's why we got new equilibrium so here in at the rate of interest r0 we are having investment plus government spending here at this very point from here till here so for this very equilibrium we need to be having saving plus taxes to the same extent that is from here till here but for this we need to have saving up till here because we are having this very saving curve that's it so we need to have saving here the moment interest rate goes up then investment plus government spending would fall we would be needing to come at this very point from here till here and saving and taxes too would be needing to come down to here from here till here and that's how we will be having decrement in income from y0 to y1 that is here so it's really really simple i really don't think we need to waste time onto this and that's how we will getting the is curve so we have understood absolutely nothing here it's just that author has now incorporated the government sector and government sector is simply nothing it's just like investment and it's just simply like saving only difference is because it's addition to the investment so this would shift rightwards it is addition to the saving thing so this would shift shift upwards and that's how again we will be seeing the derivation of the is curve that's it this was really really simple now what can cause a shift in the is curve it's the number one changes in the government spending all right how can it cause a shift it's really simple at the same very rate of interest which is r0 if government is increasing its expenditure earlier we were here i0 r g0 and for this the equilibrium point was s0 t is 0 and equilibrium income was y0 so we were here r0 y0 here moment nothing happened its interest rate is the same still government expenditure has gone up because we've already studied government expenditure is not dependent upon the rate of in interest right now rate of interest could be anything still government would be incurring the expenditure because of certain external considerations because people need money because government is a welfare state so here again that very logic we can apply government spending shifts the uh, i plus g curve rightwards we are having this new point i0 r0 g1 so now we need to be a little bit cautious of writing this because investment component has not been changed it stays as i0 so we are to write i0 here i0 here but g0 here and g11 g1 here because government components has gone up and here we will be needing to write what taxes have not changed we have just changed the level of government spending so we really need to be a little bit careful while writing these points so here we'll be having i0 plus g0 equal to t0 so t0 is same as here t0 t0 but savings has gone up why exactly are saving going up because we need to re-equilibrate our goods market and good market equilibrium can only happen if income goes up so as a proportion of saving also goes up and so we are having the equilibrium that's the explanation that we've already studied so new equilibrium new equilibrium would be here and that's how we are seeing the equilibrium but now what has happened definitely income has gone up from y0 to y1 apart from this what has happened we are seeing rate of interest says i r0 income was y0 we were having at point a but now 
at r0 income has gone up to here that is y1 so r0 stays here still income has gone up and that's how we're getting point b and if we are to see it's just a rightward shift in the is curve so what is changing or what is shifting the position of the is curve changes in the government spending this is our point number one so what can cause a shift in is schedule is the increase or decrease in the government spending we can do it otherwise as well we can try explaining it in very different manner where there is a fall in government spending so in that very manner a reverse of this would happen that was really really simple like from here we'll be getting back to here and from y1 we will be getting back to y0 and we will be seeing a left of our shift in the is curve and again this tiny point here that although the government expenditure has increased let's say to the tune of rupees 100 but increase in income would be to the due tune of rupees 100 into multiplier because as we know multiplier exists in the economy it's just like money multiplier i'm sure we all have studied about the money multiplier from munal sir or from any other source so just like money multiplier we are having g multiplier investment multiplier foreign trade multiplier all these multiplier so intuitive explanation would suffice that income multiplies to a certain extent so let's just not deviate now i'm sure we know what the multiplier is so increase in government expenditure change in the government expenditure multiply the multiplier we'll get the level of exact increase in the income that's it so point number one what causes shift in the is curve at this is the changes in the government expenditure that's it and second point is this changes in the taxes so how can change in tax in cause the shift in the is curve so we can see it right here as we can clearly see here, nothing we are changing in the investment curve because we're talking about the taxes components here. So we really don't need to change anything over here. Let's get on to the tax curve or saving plus taxes here. So initially we were at here, point number this, that is I0 plus G0 or we can see S0 plus T0 and we were at point Y0. So here R0 is here, Y0 is here, we are at point number A and this is our IS schedule when taxes were T0. Now let's say government has increased the level of taxes in the economy. Now what's going to happen? Let's assume we want to keep the rate of interest as R0. We don't want to change the rate of interest. Then how can we re-equilibrate the market? because taxes have gone up so only possible explanation is we need to reduce the saving only then only saving plus taxes would be equal to the investment plus government component because i plus g0 has not been changed either we increase i0 g0 because taxes have gone up but that we cannot do so for compensate to entire thing we have to reduce the level of saving and how can this be happened because this can only happen if we reduce the level of income in the economy because we know savings are a function of income. In order to reduce the saving, we need to reduce the level of income in the economy. And if income falls all the way up from, all the way down from Y0 till Y1, then and then only saving would be at the initial level of S0. Although we will be needing to write S1 here because just as to explicitly show the fact that we are understanding we are rightly doing this entire exercise so s0 we would be writing and t1 again we would be writing here because government has increased the taxes so we're no longer at t0 we are at t1 and because level of income has fallen in the economy and so is the saving so we are at s1 but s1 plus t1 are again equal to i0 plus g0 all right and also we are not at the initial level of savings we are at s1 s1 is a different level of saving it's just that we cannot write any mathematical example here but let's just not complicate the thing it's really really simple so we have what we have studied number one taxes has gone up from t0 to t1 how to re-equilibrate the market by decreasing the saving how can we do that by reducing the income so income has fallen from y0 to y1 and saving two has fallen from s0 to s1 but s1 plus t1 it is equal to i0 plus g0 and we are having new level of income y1 which is here so r0 stays here y1 is our new income that's how we can see is curve have shifted left what that is from point a to point b again multiplier comes into picture but multiply is a little bit different here because we're talking about the tax multiply which works in a reverse manner so minus b that is minus propensity marginal propensity to consume upon one minus 
b that is 1 minus marginal propensity to consume this is our tax multiplier and this was something that we've already studied in one of the lectures so let's not waste time on to this so what we have studied again really really simple what can can what can cause a shift in is schedule number one changes in the government expenditure number two changes in the taxes so we really don't need to write increase only because it can work other way around as well we government can decrease the tax also so better word would be changes in the taxes and number one would be changes in the government spending all right so now we have studied this thing as well next is this autonomous changes in the investment this is really really simple it's like although we know that the investment component private investment component that is dependent upon the level of rate of interest in the economy because private entrepreneur would always be interested into the cost of incurring that expenditure and that cost of the rate of interest but this might be one of the case in the economy wherein person is not really concerned about rate of investment rate of return or interest rate in the economy just academically authorized return and we also need to write in an answer that there is a probability that in certain cases even investment can be autonomous autonomous to what autonomous to interest rate it doesn't matter it happens in real life or not but this is just for the sake of finishing our answer there are three things government expenditure taxes plus autonomous investment that's it and this is true also in certain cases not every individual is so concerned about the rate of interest some people just want to undertake investment for certain reason that is not, that has nothing to do with the rate of interest so we have done everything about the is curve last point is how the equilibrium in the goods market and a money market simultaneously established so is curve is here lm curve is here their interactions interactions gonna determine the equilibrium in the goods market as well as in the money market and that too simultaneously that is it so we have derived everything we have reached the conclusion we have come up at one of the model we are in we can clearly see we are having simultaneous equilibrium in the money market as well as in the goods market we can simultaneously determine the rate of interest income in the economy and income level in the economy and this is what we mean by ISLM model all right now there is just conclusion part here which is written in the Freudian please read it on your own there is nothing difficult here and uh, if at all some of you find it difficult let me know in the comment section I'll try explaining it but if somebody has understood all the topics up till now then it would be very very simple to understand this tiny thing which is absolutely nothing but conclusion so we are done with chapter number five of Freudian kindly read the chapter chapter number five five on your own from foreign so as to have a complete hold over whatever we have studied up till now tomorrow we'll be moving on to the next chapter and that is again really really simple the keynesian system policy effects in the islm model but it is simple part we're done with the chapter thank you so much for watching and goodbye